an order of service for noonday, Thursday, November 26, 2020, Thanksgiving Day. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the righteous live forever, and their reward is with the Lord. The Most High takes care of them. Therefore they will receive a glorious crown, and a beautiful diadem from the hand of the Lord. Because with his right hand he will cover them, and with his arm he will shield them. The Lord will take his zeal as his whole armor, and will arm all creation to repel his enemies. He will put on righteousness as a breastplate, and wear impartial justice as a helmet. He will take holiness as an invincible shield, and will sharpen stern wrath for a sword. And creation will join with him to fight against his frenzied foes. Psalm 126 When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark in the fourth chapter. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get and still more will be given you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. On this Thanksgiving Day, we remember and give special thanks for Sojourner Truth, Liberator and Prophetic Witness, 1883. Sojourner Truth born Isabella Bomfrey to James and Elizabeth Bomfrey near the turn of the 19th century spent the first 28 years of her life as a slave in the state of New York. During that time, she was separated first from her siblings and then from her children as they were sold to various slaveholders. In 1826, when her owner refused to honor his promise to emancipate her ahead of New York's abolition of slavery, Sojourner took her infant daughter and in her words, quote, walked off believing that to be all right, end quote. She later learned that her young son had been illegally sold to a former master and was enslaved in Alabama. She filed suit and in 1828, two years after her escape, she won her case, becoming one of the first black women to ever prevail in an American court over a white man. With slavery abolished in the state, Sojourner moved to New York City, a free woman. Having undergone a religious conversion after her escape, she became, in the Afri became involved in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, founded when white members of St. George's Episcopal Church in Philadelphia would not permit African Americans to worship alongside them as equals. Heartened by the knowledge that a black woman, Jarena Lee, had been ordained as a minister in the AME tradition, Truth 
was known to speak, to preach, and pray and sing with remarkable passion and eloquence. She also worked at a shelter for homeless women, convinced that showing Christ love required meeting the material needs of the poor and the vulnerable. The next decades of her life would prove tumultuous for Sojourner. She was abused by men in positions of religious authority and in 1835 was falsely accused of crimes she did not commit. She was acquitted of all charges and later successfully sued her accusers for slander. At approximately 46 years old, Sojourner heard a call from God telling her to go east and preach the gospel, telling the truth of her experiences as a slave and the Christian imperative to support the abolition of slavery. It was at this time that she abandoned the slave names given her by her master, instead taking up the name Sojourner Truth. After over a year of itinerant preaching, she joined an abolitionist cooperative in Massachusetts, which had been founded on principles of women's rights and pacifism, in addition to its abolitionist mission. Sojourner became a traveling preacher approaching white religious meetings and campgrounds and asking to speak. Captivated by her charismatic presence and her wit and wisdom, they found her hard to refuse. She never learned to read or write, but quoted Bible passages extensively from her memory in her sermons. Her reputation grew and she became part of the abolitionist and women's rights speakers network. During a women's rights convention in Ohio, Sojourner gave the speech for which she is best remembered, known now as Ain't I a Woman. She had listened for hours to clergy attack women's rights and abolition, using the Bible to support their oppressive logic. God had created women to be weak and blacks to be a subservient race. Speaking extemporaneously, she exposed the hypocrisy of the white male ministers, pointing out the ways in which slavery had forced her to become as strong as any man, <clears throat> and noting that Jesus himself never turned women away or refused to teach them on account of their gender. Until her death, she continued to speak and preach, advocating for the right to vote to be expanded to all women, not only white women. She died at her home in Michigan on November 26th, 1883. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has made the church to be one body with many members and many gifts, we thank you for the witness of your daughter, Sojourner Truth, and for her courage to preach the truth of your liberating love in the face of great injustice. Grant that we, like her, may use our time and talents and energy to proclaim the coming of your kingdom, which is good news to the poor, and in which all the oppressed shall be made free. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is another day, O Lord. We know not what it will bring, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we are to stand up, help us to stand bravely. If we are to sit still, help us to sit quietly. If we are to lie low, help us to do it patiently. And if we are to do nothing, let us do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give us the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.